Hey everybody, welcome back to the ECG channel. My name is Reed and today we are going to be detailing uh, and outlining kind of the fundamental concepts behind one of the supraventricular tachycardias that is AV nodal reentry tachycardia or abbreviated as AVNRT. And so AVNRT, AV nodal reentry tachycardia, is a narrow complex supraventricular tachycardia. As you can see here, that is very regular. It is narrow, complex, as long as there are no ventricular conduction delays. And you see that throughout the entirety of the rhythm. You can see if we get the rate here, we have find this QRS on this solid line, 300, 150, just under 150, maybe 140 beats per minute here. SVTs, as you can imagine, are tachycardia, and so they must be above 100 beats per minute. They're generally um, a little bit faster than that, just like we see here. And so it's a narrow complex rhythm, and so that makes me think that these rhythms arise from somewhere within the AV node and travel through our rapidly conducting his Purkinje system. So that's kind of the direction of conduction through the ventricles. But let's talk about the pathophysiology of this. I really want you guys to understand AV nodal reentry. What is AV nodal reentry? And so I have this diagram here of an AV node. And so this is my AV node. We have up here is the atria, down here is the ventricles. And so the AV node, interestingly, so imagine we have a sinus node. Here's my sinus node. And my sinus node fires off in the atria. And it sends signal down the atria. And when it's done firing in the atria, it travels into the AV node, right? The AV node is the next aspect of the conduction system that is going to conduct this signal. And the AV node is comprised of two pathways. First, we have the slow pathway. And second, we have the fast pathway. What's interesting is when that signal enters into the AV node, it goes down both pass pathways. It goes down towards the slow, and it also goes down to the fast pathway. And as you could imagine, the fast pathway conducts the signal much faster, and so we get rapid conduction down the fast pathway, and we get slow conduction, which is I represented by this squiggly slow conduction down the slow pathway. And so as you can imagine, the fast pathway is the pathway that normally conducts a signal down into the ventricles, right? And so that's where it goes and depolarizes the ventricle in a normal sinus rhythm. But what also happens is it is able to start conducting anterior grade also up the AV node via the slow pathway. And so you see anterior grade conduction down the slow pathway. And so the slow pathway is continuing to go in this, in this normal fashion. And then you have backwards conduction from the, pa from the fast pathway. And then right here, they cancel out. So this is the point where they run into each other and essentially terminate the rhythm. And then these fibers will repolarize and then be ready to conduct the next beat. And so that is normal AV nodal functioning. And there's something interesting about these two pathways. The first is that obviously the slow pathway is slower. But what's interesting is the fast pathway takes longer to repolarize. So what does that mean? That means it's refractory for a longer period of time. So imagine, and that's relative to the slow pathway. So imagine if I drew an action potential for my fast pathway, I have the upstroke of my action potential, that's depolarization, and then it flattens out, and then we have repolarization, right? And so all the way from the beginning of depolarization until the termination of repolarization, which is this downstroke, this is the refractory period, right? Where that fast pathway is unable to conduct another signal. It's refractory. Well, the slow pathway, if I drew its action potential, it goes up just like it does in the fast pathway. 
but its action potential does not last nearly as long. Notice that the length of my refractory period is shorter. So it's got a shorter refractory period. Okay? And so then what I can do is if I overlaid my, sh my short or my slow pathway action potential over my fast pathway, and I did it in blue, my short or my slow pathway, excuse me, would the action potential would look like this. And then you see it ends earlier, right? So the blue is my slow pathway. Black is my fast pathway. So what happens is if I have a beat, right? So we have our SA node fires off, right? And we it does exactly what we said it was going to do. But say we have a premature atrial contraction that occurs and it fires off in the atria to depolarize the atria. And if I draw the PAC, I'll do it in green. If that PAC fires off, depolarizes the atria, it's going to send signal down into the AV node. It's going to reach the branching point to go down the slow or the fast pathway. And if that PAC occurs any time in this region, you can see that in this region, my slow pathway has already recovered, but my fast pathway has not. So if it happens in this time frame, my fast pathway is still refractory, but my slow pathway is not. And so this signal, when it attempts to go down the fast pathway, it gets blocked, right? It gets blocked because we're still refractory in the fast pathway. But the slow pathway is no longer refractory, and that PAC is able to conduct down the slow pathway. But look what happens. There's no reciprocating signal from the fast pathway to cancel this signal out. And so what happens is the slow pathway signal conducts all the way down. It will conduct down into the ventricles, and we'll get our QRS. But it will also conduct retrograde all the way through. By the time it goes retrograde, it has been enough time for the fast pathway to recover. And so now we have this signal that is re-entering. And it comes up, and then it goes backwards up the AV node. And by the time it returns, by the time it gets to this point, the slow pathway has already recovered again. And then we have essentially this now a circuit that is going around and around the AV node. And that is the AV nodal reentry mechanism. That is called AV nodal reentry. It's when a PAC occurs right in this exact moment, and it causes signal to go around and around. And every time it goes around and sends a signal up into the atria, down into the ventricles, up into the atria, down into the ventricles. And this mechanism is called slow, fast. Right? We're going down the slow pathway and then back up the fast pathway, down the slow pathway, up the fast pathway. So what would we expect to happen with the morphology of our beats? Well, we get, we'll erase some of these tracings so that we can kind of talk about them in more detail. So once we get this AV nodal mechanism kicking in, what happens? So the first thing that's going to happen is we're going to have uh, this is going to go, sorry, let me change my pin. So we're going to have signal coming down the slow pathway, and it's going to depolarize the ventricles, and it's going to cause a QRS. We will have that signal then go retrograde very rapidly via the fast pathway, and then we will have retrograde depolarization of the atria. And so sometimes that P wave that is generated, that retrograde, that retrograde P wave is either going to be buried in the QRS 
or you'll see like a little bump right after the QRS. We call this short RP tachycardia because the interval from the beginning of the R wave to the P wave is short, typically less than 70 to 80 milliseconds. So that is the retrograde P wave that we would expect to see in this AV in RT. Well, let's look at the ECG now and understand this better. So we've got this narrow complex rhythm that we said, it's at 140 beats per minute. I look for P waves before my QRSs and I don't see any, right? I don't see any P waves. So I'm starting to think, well, what kind of narrow complex tachycardia is this, right? I see that my QRS that's narrow is upright in lead one and it's also upright in AVF. So I know that it's going, the ventricular depolarization is going down and to the left. But look what I see, especially in leads AVR and leads V1. If we zoom in really close to V1, what you'll notice is that we've got our normal depolarization in V1, right? If I kind of make this pin a little thinner, we've got our normal depolarization in V1. But then we have this little R prime. That's an R prime. In that R prime, we're like, well, is this an incomplete right bundle branch block? Well, in the setting of a narrow complex tachycardia with no P waves, we call this a pseudo R prime. What is that R prime? That's actually representing, this R prime is actually representing the short RP tachycardia, right? That is the retrograde P wave. And you can see that even better in AVR where we have that pseudo R prime, right? That R prime is heading towards AVR at the end of the QRS. Well, if we had retrograde depolarization from this AVNRT going in this direction via the atria, we would have a retrograde P wave that would be upright in AVR. And that's exactly what we're seeing here. So that's our pseudo R prime. Similarly, if that AV retrograde depolarization of the atria is going upwards, we should see negative waves represented in our inferior leads. And so you can also, in the inferior leads, have these, what we would call a pseudo S wave, right? You might even see it here in AVF. You can see that little notching. These are pseudo F waves, or pseudo S waves. And what is that representing? That's representing retrograde P waves through the atria. And so, remember that AVNRT is a mechanism that occurs when we have this signal going around and around the AV node, and each time it goes around and sends signal up and down. And because of that, we have something called a short RP tachycardia. You can potentially see pseudo R prime waves in V1 or in AVR that are representing the retrograde P waves. You can also see evidence of pseudo S waves in my inferior leads, 2, 3, and AVF, because that retrograde atrial depolarization is going to go away from those leads. And that's what we see, right? Even in lead 3, you can see this little notching right there. That's a pseudo wave from retrograde atrial depolarization. Now, you're not always going to see these pseudo waves because sometimes that fast pathway bringing the signal all the way back into the atria can happen so fast that it's buried in the QRS. So it's not all the time. Sometimes the P can be buried in the QRS. 
but notice that it's going to be a very regular narrow complex tachycardia. There are not going to be atrial P waves before my QRSs. Okay, notice there's no P waves before my QRSs in a normal fashion. And it's going to be quite rapid like we see here. So I hope this video helps you kind of understand the pathophysiology of AV and RT. We talked about slow fast AV and RT today, initiated by a premature atrial contraction, right? That allows, because the fast pathway, the refractory period is longer, that fast pathway is functionally blocked for a short period of time, and that PAC comes flying in, it gets blocked here, and then it allows for that reentry pathway to occur. So I hope this helps. If you have any questions about AV nodal reentry tachycardia, um, please feel free to, to reach out and comment. And if not, thank you so much for watching these videos. If you enjoy them, think about subscribing to the channel. Um, and yeah, have a great rest of your day. We'll see you on the next ECG video.